We told you a little bit about this group last night on the night beat for years. A Texas State University nonprofit has worked to identify hundreds of people who have died crossing our southern border. A warning before this next story that some viewers may find this video disturbing. Last night we told you about the process they complete while working to identify people who died in Maverick County. This includes fingerprinting, documenting personal items and taking pictures of distinctive features like braces. See the braces right there tonight. The night team Zaria Oates shares how the university's team of anthropologists provides families with closure. Operation ID is a Texas State University nonprofit. They're taking the lead on identifying unknown people who've died in southern border counties. The organization currently has 180 positive identifications on remains that are in the process of being returned to their families. So when we're talking about this humanitarian crisis where individuals are crossing the U.S.-Mexico border in Texas in a very rural region of the state, um, the only counties that maintain a medical examiner's office are El Paso and Webb County. Operation ID is critical because without a medical examiner's office, some counties are left with limited resources to identify people's remains. Our main priority is getting them identified and finding family and next of kin so that we can provide answers. Well, you don't really get closure, but at least they have answers of what happened and they have a place that they can go to to visit their brother, their daughter, their father, whoever it may be to them. However, for those who can't be identified quickly, the organization dives deeper into their process back at Texas State University. Whenever they're mostly skeletonized, we bring them in here and we will process the remains. We also wash the personal effects, anything that we find. We honestly just try to give them their individuality back so we can figure out who they are. We're conducting a biological profile, which is age, sex, stature, population affinity. It's also looking at any trauma, such as if you've broken a bone and it healed, you can tell. Yeah. And here is the processing room. This is where skeletal remains and clothing items go through individual cleaning and drying processes. And then we place them here in anatomical position. Once everything is dry, the analysis are done, photographs are taken, all the documentation is done. Then here we place everything. Hundreds of personal items get tucked away with as much information as Operation ID could find. Once items are documented and pictures are taken, postdoctoral students upload the information into NamUs. The National Missing and Unidentified Person System provides a database to the public so people can search for their loved ones by unique identifiers. We've had family members and other ad like community advocates that will pull those images from an individual's missing persons profile on that website and circulate it in their community, both on this side of the border and transnationally throughout the Americas. Many of the families Operation ID communicates with are in Mexico and South America, so they ensure communication is accessible. I talk to a lot of consulates. I talk to a lot of family members. Um, usually whenever somebody calls and they speak Spanish, I answer the phone. Families don't really know where to go to find answers, so they just cast a wide net. They call everybody that they think can help them. Operation ID's goal is to be that help for everyone. Through donations and grants at both the state and federal level, they're able to continue identifying people who have died at the border. Our, again, our hope is that everybody is identified and repatriated. Operation ID is always looking for more volunteers in border counties. You can find more information on ksat.com about how to volunteer your time to Operation ID. Zaria Oates, KSAT 12 News.